Programming 101, that's my YouTube channel, and Equitable Equations, that's Andrew's YouTube channel. Links to both channels will be in the description below. We love the way each other teach, and so I want to learn from Andrew today. What did you learn? Talk to me, Andrew. Hey, everybody. Um, so recently, I've made the switch over to R's native pipe operator. As of a recent update in R, you can now use a pipe operator without having to load in any other packages. Um, let me just show you what that's about. So I'm going to load up the ggplot2 package, the Palmer Penguins package, which really just has a data set in it. There may be functions, but I don't know about them. Um, so here we have a bunch of observations about penguins from different islands around the world. And uh, I'm going to do a plot or try and do a plot. But if I just execute this code right now for this ggplot, I'm going to get an error. The pipe operator is not found. It's found in the Magritter package, which loads up with dplyr, which I haven't loaded. Um, again, right, as so a ordinarily, reason, just so that I understand, Andrew, ordinarily, when we install the tidyverse, we land yeah. up getting not just ggplot, but we're getting the Magritter package and we get the pipe operator. And so that is all coming together. But you're saying, if you don't do that, if you just bring in ggplot by itself, you don't have the usual pipe operator and you don't need it anymore because there's yeah. now this native pipe operator. Yeah, and in the R community, we're seeing this gradual switch away from that percent greater than percent yep. um, pipe yep. to this vertical bar greater than. It's supposed uh -huh. to look like a triangle. Um, and now this plot will work. Penguins is going to get piped in just like with the Magritter pipe as the first argument into ggplot. And that seems to be taking a second, but there's my nice little my nice little gg plot. Very nice. Um, one reason I didn't adopt it right away was because I got so used to the keyboard shortcut for that pipe, the Command Shift M or Control Shift M. Okay, so is there a shortcut for for the native uh, pipe? Yeah, so I'm just going to go up to my Preferences menu here, and if you go to Code. All you have to do is check this little box, and assuming you're on a relatively updated version of R. You uh -huh. can switch to the native pipe operator just like that. And, I'll and hit that's the shift, shift M. control M. Command, that right? yep. That's right. Command or control, depending on Mac or PC. So that's what I've, uh, that's my big thing in R recently. What about you, Greg? I love it. Okay. Well, I'm going to talk to you a little bit about, a little, I'm going to talk to you a little bit about, if I can just get the words out, um, the cut function. And the, the, the really, the thing I want to hone in on is, when you take a numeric variable and you chop it up, and you're usually doing it because you're wanting to create some sort of categorical variable with a numeric variable, uh, you might have uh, a whole lot of ages, zero to 100, and you want to chop them up into like a categorical variable that is like young, medium aged, and old, for example, and you want that, those sort of categories. Yeah. And the way you do the chopping up, R has got a kind of notation that describes what each bin has in it. And sometimes people get confused about what that notation means. And I'm just gonna talk you through that right now. So, Excellent. because I found this confusing. So uh, now tell me when you can see my screen. Got it. You got it? Okay, so uh, here we've just got, as always, I usually just start off by putting in the tidyverse because it just brings in all the packages that I want. Uh, now that I've learned about the native pipe operator, I might, you know, might not need that anymore. Thanks for that lesson. Um, I just, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do this lesson just by uh, using this Star Wars data set. And just so that you can see it, this is built into your, into your computer, into R, if you've got, if you've installed the tidyverse, uh, it's in there. And you can see here, we've got, we've got some numeric variables that we might want to chop up and create a categorical variable out of, or just analyze it and sort of say like within different categories, different, different within certain, you know, sort of uh, uh, bins, what does that, what does that data look like? So if we go back here and what I've done is reasonably simple, I'll just walk you through it. And then I'll, then, and then there's a little lesson here. So we just start off with Star Wars. Pipe operator, I usually think of it as meaning and then, and now we've learned about the native pipe operator, it means the same thing. So we're piping the Star Wars data set into the next line of code. I just want, I'm just taking out one variable in this case, mass. Uh, I'm taking out the, 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 I've removed the missing values just for the sake of simplicity here. And here's really the code that we want to look at, mutate. That means when we use mutate, we're going to create either a new variable or overwrite an existing variable. And in this case, we're creating a new one called size, and I'm going to use the cut argument. Here it is here, the cut the cut function. And within the cut function, the first argument is mass. That's the numeric variable that we're going to break up. Then the next argument is breaks. 
right? And then we say equals concatenation and where you're going to have the break. So we've got naught. It's going to be, you, you know, we're going to slice this thing out from naught at 50, at 100. And then, and just infinity is nice because you don't know what the biggest value is. So just put infinity there and it, and it does, just, you know, it doesn't matter. The last bucket will have anything from 100. And a, so what do these breaks mean? It means that the, this is going to be broken up into, into three bins, one between naught and 50, the next one between 50 and 100, and the next one between 100 and, you know, going on forever. We can give these three bins labels. And again, we just use concatenation, labels equals concatenation. And we put our three labels in there. And then what I've done is I've said, and then just do count by size. And if I push control enter there, you'll see we get, I'm, gonna, I'm just going to move this. Here we get a small 13, medium 36, large 10. So it's just counted up the observations by these three in these three categories, right? Now, I'm going to run that same code. I've rewritten the code here, but without the labels. And this is really what I want to show you. If I run the code without the labels, right? Those, the, the, it's showing us exactly what R is looking at. And this is what's quite interesting. You'll see the notation here is round bracket, then the, the lower limit, the upper limit, and then a square bracket. And what does that mean? Why a round bracket here? Why a square bracket there? What is meant by that? What it means is this. And I've actually written it up here. You can see it right here, right? The round bracket means it's everything that's larger than the value over here. Everything larger than zero, but not including zero. It doesn't include zero. Up to 50, and the square bracket means and including 50. So it's everything above zero, but not including zero, up to 50, and including 50. Okay, the next category is everything above 50, it's a round bracket, so not including 50, all the way up to 100 and including 100. So if, if a particular observation had a value of exactly 100, that value would land up in the second row here and be counted in the 36. If it was 101, it would go into the next line. Does that make sense? If the value had exactly 50, it would be counted in the first row over here it would be included in this category here in this bin. So the square bracket means include, and the round bracket means do not include, but from that point onwards. Does that make sense? Yeah, that's fantastic. Yeah, uh, it's kind of the... a fun little thing. And I I always found those little, that notation confusing and I sort of, uh, you know, and I always worried that I was getting it wrong. So I kind of I thought I'd, I'd jump into that today. That's super helpful. Thanks for that, Greg. Okay. Um, listen, everybody, uh, if, if, if you wanna, if you're watching my channel, go and check out Andrew's channel. There is uh, Equitable Equations. There's a link in the description below this video. Um, and just a quick note to the people watching on my channel. My channel is sponsored by Nested Knowledge. They're a platform that supports systematic lit review and meta-analysis. Absolutely amazing. I'll put a link in the, in the description as well, uh, as well below. I encourage you to go and check them out. Thanks, Greg. Um, big ups to our programming 101. Please, everybody, subscribe to that if you haven't already. And uh, I'll look forward to chatting with you again really soon, Greg. Okay. Have a great day. Take care, Andrew. All the best. Bye. Bye-bye.